Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Brother Brand Ambassador Angela Wolf here, and we have a fantastic show for you today. We've talked about having a panel of some of the best educators. Well, they're all the best, but <laughs> we have a handful today. We're going to give you the top tips for hooping and embroidery. Stay tuned. See you in a second. All right, I see you all rolling in. And just so you know, we are live streaming on Brother Sewing Facebook and YouTube channels. We can see all of your comments and questions. So be sure during our panel, make sure you ask what you want. We are live and we will try to help you out. So let's bring up our fabulous guests. We have Kathy, Dina, Barb. Why am I so big? <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. So for all of you that have not met some of these educators, you have now, Kathy, you want to just give a quick rundown of where you're from and how long you've been with Brother? Um, I started with Brother in January of 2018 and I reside in sunny Florida today. Oh, we're a little jealous about that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Tina. Go ahead, Tina. <laughs> That's true. Hi, I'm Tina Bartlemay. I live in Tennessee and I joined Brother at the beginning of last year. And the joke is we're having a windstorm where I am. So I'm hoping not to be turned into Dorothy before we're done. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a whole nother show. Only if it's live though. <laughs> and Barb. Hi everybody. I'm Barb Michael Lychek from the Chicago area. And I've been with Brother 13 years now and we're expecting snow later today, but we're okay right now. <laughs> That's fantastic. And I'm Angela Wolf, and I'm in Michigan, and I might turn into Dorothy with some snow. So this could be a fun show. <laughs> so I'm so excited for this panel because there are so many people that either bought embroidery machines over the holidays, they took theirs out of their box, <laughs> they're, they've had one for a while that they haven't mm -hmm. used. And when it comes to embroidery, one of the most important things is hooping. I mean, I really think that's, if you hoop that wrong, <laughs> there's a lot of other things that could go wrong. But if it's hooped wrong, that could cause all the problems. So today we are talking about successful hooping for your embroidery project. And you can use any any machine. It could be from a very inexpensive one all the way up to the creme de la creme, the luminaire, of course. <laughs> uh, so, Tina, why don't you take it off? Because you're going to talk about stabilizers here. And uh, why don't you get started with that? All right. So um, let's let's go ahead and I'm going to switch over here and just really quickly, you know, there's some really easy rules with stabilizers. There's lots of different kinds. But if you're brand new to embroidery, the easiest way to think about things is if you're using a woven fabric and by that I mean something like quilting cotton without a stretch, then you're going to use a cutaway, stab or, sorry, a tearaway stabilizer. And whenever you're doing knits, you're going to use a cutaway. And as you're looking at your stabilizer, you can see I have two pieces here. It's, it's hard to tell, you know, based on looking at them, but it's easy to tell when you start tearing. So if it tears easily like paper, it's a tear away. That's good for wovens. If it can't be torn easily, then that's a cutaway and that's really for knits. All right. And I did put a handout together for you guys today, just in case you're, you want some information afterwards. So let's take a look here. This is showing the Brother Pace Setter line of stabilizers. So you can see here on this page, we have several tearaway options for you. Adhesive ones, medium weight, heavy weight, and even ones with iron-on backing. And then if we move to the next page, we'll see our cutaway options. And this will be available to you after the Facebook Live today. But the way it's organized is you see the packaging on the left. You see the name of the stabilizer and the product number in the middle. And if it comes in various sizes, you see that listed as well. And then on the far right-hand side, you see some detailed information about how to use the stabilizer, what types of fabric that they're good for. So hopefully that'll be a good resource for everyone. But, you that know, is, it really, yeah. Tina, that really is a great resource because not only do they have all the numbers where they can order from, call their brother dealer, order it online, whatever they need to, but you also gave the description of what it's for, so in case they forgot. And also, for those of you that don't want to wait for this to hit my blog uh, by tomorrow, you can rewind and take a screenshot. <laughs> There's <Exactly>. always options. <laughs> Great one. So, you know, it really starts to get real when you start looking at some of the different fabrics that we try and stitch on. So I've got several things put together here and I'm starting off with polar fleece. And if you're not familiar, this is actually a knit. See how it stretches in multiple directions. 
And so when it's time for stabilizing, it really works well with a medium weight feasible cutaway. And that keeps it from stretching while I'm stitching. And this particular design is what you call an embossed design. So there's no stitching in the middle of the duck. And it's so it actually has a little bit of dimensionality when it's done. And so to accomplish something like that, I would just add some water soluble topper, oops, as you see here, on top when I stitch it. And then once it's, oops, once it's done stitching, I would just peel away the water soluble topper. And if any of you have ever had trouble removing the water soluble topper, a great tip for you is to pull it towards your stitching when you're trying to remove it. And that way it'll tear away much more cleanly. And then if you have the little bits in here that you, you're trying to get a, a rid of, another nice tip is you can wet a tennis ball and rub that over that, and that'll pick up those little bits of water-soluble topper. I've never heard that before. That's fantastic. And I have a couple tennis balls that I don't use. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't make sure they're not the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up, I've got a couple things with medium weight tear away. So here's an example. This is a little felt laptop case. There's no stretch to it. So it works well with this tear away stabilizer. And it's actually a fairly dense design, as you can see here. But that tear away stabilizer did a great job. There's no distortion in the stitching. There's no puckering. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little uh, run stitch that goes right along the edge of the design. And it's perfectly placed, which is an ideal outcome for stitching. And of course, with the tearaways, one of the nice things about them is when you're done stitching, you can just pull them towards the stitches gently and all the excess will tear away. So that's a great one to have in your arsenal as well. Here's another example of using that same um, stabilizer. This is a little canvas shoe bag, if you would. Um, and I did this on the six needle. So I used the sleeve hoop to fit it in there. But again, do the stitching, and I've got lettering on here as well as an embroidery design. I will tell you, most of the time when I'm doing small lettering, like you see here, I do have a water-soluble topper on there while it's stitching. And then, again, I just gently tear it towards the design, and about 98% of it has already been removed. So, hey, Tina, just a yeah. question, because yeah. I know for people who are new to embroidery, uh, when you use a tearaway versus mm -hmm. um, a cutaway, Yep. And you have a dense design and you're trying, do they have to get all those itsy bitsy, like, like the design you showed, it uh -huh. looked like it paired all the way around it. Do they have to, if, if there's little spaces in between, do they have to go and dig that out or can they just leave it? You can leave it. Some, I mean, that's really kind of a personal preference. I normally leave it in the small interior spaces. Um, it doesn't hurt anything and it's just quicker and easier. Yeah. That's, I always get that question. So I just thought I'd ask because I know it's come out and everybody's saying your tennis ball tip is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad. All right. So let's do a couple more that we have here. So next up, um, I'm using the heavyweight tearaway stabilizer. So here's a good example of that. This is a fairly heavy nylon bag. It's got the, the waterproof lining inside. So there's a lot of rigidity to the bag. But there's quite a few stitches in this giant lettering. Um, it's a, almost five inches tall, so it's a quite a large design. And with this heavyweight tearaway stabilizer, you notice I don't have any distortion or puckering. So it really worked well. And again, on the back side, I would just pull away the excess, as you can see I've done here. And to your point, Angela, let's see if I can get inside of this bag here. Whoops. Yeah. So see, here's a great example. I pulled it away from the outside, but I left it in these small interior spaces, especially for something like this where it's a bean or a run stitch. And if I pulled really hard on that, I could actually distort my stitches a little bit. So it's best to leave it in areas like that for sure. Yeah, we can see that really well. That makes sense too. And here's another example. This is one of those little makeup bags. And again, I did this on the six needle with the magnetic hoops and I'll show you those in a little bit, but it makes it really easy to get in there and again, just tear away the excess when you're done. So it works well on all kinds of things like purses and makeup bags. It's a nice stabilizer option for that. Nice. Here's another little example. This is ultra suede fabric and the same stabilizer on this cute little elephant. And you notice it's got dense areas as well as run stitch areas. So lots of different things, but there's no puckering or anything in the stitch out. So um, just refer to the, to the handout if you have questions on using it. But that heavyweight tearaway is really a nice option for some of these specialty fabrics. 
that elephant is beautiful. That doesn't happen to be built into any of our fabulous brother machines, is it? Of course it is. It's in the PR680W. It is adorable, isn't it? Oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah, he's really a cutie. Here's another example. Again, this is uh, something that might be, you know, difficult, probably impossible to hoop on a flatbed machine. But using one of the multi needles, you can get in here and do the lettering on a backpack. You just basically open up the pocket here, and you could use the the flash magnetic frame to get in there. Now, because you know this one's kind of heavy, I went ahead and used the medium weight adhesive uh, tear away. Some of you may have refer to this as a sticky stabilizer. And if you're, if you still don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically, it's a two layer stabilizer. And this is one of the few times in my life I wish I had fingernails, but you can see there's a release paper and then there's the sticky portion of the stabilizer. And you basically have, you put it in the hoop with a sticky surface facing up and then it affixes to the back of what you're trying to hoop and holds it steady while you're doing the stitching. So that's a, that's a nice one to have as well. So Tina, um, yes. I, I love that. Do you know to buy a per or to purchase a bag like that, uh, mm -hmm. to have your logo on it, it gets, can get pretty expensive and it's expensive to do that. And if you have an embroidered machine to do that, that's fantastic. Do you have to have a six needle or 10 needle to embroider that ideally? Or can you, yeah, not really do. you need the free arm and let me show you really quick. I'm going to flip to another camera just so you can see another example. So this is like the green bag. This is the lavender variety. And you can see that why, why it's better on the multi-needles is you have access to the, the free arm here. So I'm just going to pop this off. This is one of our new flash magnetic frames uh, for our multi-needle machines. This is a 5 by 7 size. It makes it really easy to hoop things like this. But to answer your question, on the multi-needles, we have the free arm feature here. And so it's easy to get inside of the leg of jeans or in a pocket or inside of a bag or inside of a, a backpack. It makes it, it makes it really easy to do these large three-dimensional objects. That makes sense. That hoop is amazing, by the way. <laughs> I love that hoop. It's one of my very favorite ones. And then I've got one other quick one. Should have, should have saved something like this for Kathy, but I get asked a lot when I'm out if you can embroider on these sorts of mesh fabrics. And most people think that you can't, but you actually can. The stabilizer I would use in this case would be the lightweight adhesive water soluble because what it is, it's as sticky like the last one, but once you add water to it, all of this material here will dissolve away. And so you don't have it behind your design. And then what I did was I basically just put a low density fill stitch down behind my embroidery design. And then I can stitch on something that you might not think was embroiderable, like this mesh fabric. Well, that's a great idea. That's a cute bag, too. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And then the last thing I was going to share is, you know, we all have boo-boos, I think, from time to time when we're stitching. Um, when you have it, what's really nice about it, right, it's a little traumatic at the time, but save the, the item because it's a great test stitch out for in the future. So here you can see I had some poor color choices and some poor placement, but I saved this little tank top. And then whenever I'm stitching on this weight of t-shirt material, I do a test stitch out on here. I try out my stabilizer recipe and my colors, and then I move on. And for those of you who are perfect, I'm not in that crowd. <laughs> you can always just pull something out that you were going to give to the thrift store and, and have it for, you know, testing stitching. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a great idea, actually. Uh, I'm definitely not one of the perfect ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping for that in my next life. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so there are a few questions, and any of you can uh, respond to this. But uh, Darlene has a great question because we're talking about hooping in general. If you hoop too tight, will that cause puckering? Yes, you can absolutely cause puckering by hooping things that are too tight. Yeah. And that is one of the things I think that is one of the things when you're, especially if you're working on a knit or a stretchy fabric, something mm -hmm. like that. They, I have um, watched beginners where they just keep pulling and pulling and pulling to try to get it so tight in the hoop and you're yeah. disfiguring the fabric, fabric or garment or whatever. Yeah. The other thing that I've seen people doing is with the, um, the medium fusible cutaway. Some people might refer to it as a mesh stabilizer. They mm -hmm. iron it too hot of an iron and it's made out of a nylon type of material and you can start to melt it in the ironing process and that can create puckering as well. 
that would be bad. <laughs> that would be irreparable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions right now before we keep moving? I um I saw a few people say that uh, they love the tennis ball idea. Someone's going to steal the dog, but not steal the dog, steal the ball from their dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <gasps> Oh, oh, yes. Everybody's saying thank you. Thank you. Let me just make sure there aren't any quick questions before we move on because I don't want to lose these because the comments and questions are just rolling in most comments. They're all loving this. Um, let's see. I think that looks pretty good. I see somebody asking about a different brand. If you send us a private message, I can probably help you with that. But since it's a brother show, I won't. I can't feature that. <laughs> All right, I think everybody's great. They said they love this, they love this. Hey, Sandra. All right, so Kathy, would you like to uh, take it off next? I will, so I'm gonna go switch cameras and then I'll be right back. Oh, your studio's looking fabulous, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> oh yes, and the persona can do that too. The persona, the six needle, the 10 needle, any of those machines. All right. Okay. So I will just um, start out by saying that I cannot see my computer screen, so I don't know what's showing up on my camera, but hopefully I've got it down. We'll yell so, at you if you something. <laughs> so I like to hoop, do hard to hoop things like a baby um, hat. Yeah. That's I like cute. to use sticky stabilizer, what Tina referred to as the adhesive tear away. So here I've pulled up the corner and you can see that it just tears nicely. But what I wanted to show you was that I will score this. I've hooped it so that the um, paper backing side is up. And I, I know that um, Kim last week, I think she said she uses an old needle. I've got a just a little T-pin here. And then I go around the outside of the frame. And then I make a crisscross. For anybody watching, this is what you call scoring. In case you've ever heard us say score the paper, that's what this is. This is a great close-up of it too. And then it just easily tears away. I use my pen to kind of lift up the edges. So neat. Mm -hmm. And so what I've done, this one little hat, I've gone ahead and I've put a pen in where the center is. I just folded it in half and got the center as best I could. And because the cuff is stitched into the side seams, I can't fold it flat. But what I can do is just fold half flat. And the, the nice thing about this is I'm using my guideline markers here on the center of my hoop. And I'm trying to get this as straight as can be. Sometimes I would take this to my um, cutting mat so that I had the lines on the cutting mat to help line it up and get it straight. But the awesome thing is with the... Um, the luminaire, I've got that awesome projector. So I can just project my design. And that was how I did Wyatt's cap. Such. So I was able to just project it on there and see where I needed to stitch. On this particular one, I mm -hmm. used um, tearaway. And as you can see, I left it in between the little letters. And in my experience, I found that after it's washed a couple of times, that just washes away and you don't even see it. So there's my idea for doing, or my little hint for doing some of your hard to hoop items. Because you know, I, Kathy, was, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just have to say people are just writing, this is such a great tip. And you made a lot of people excited because not everyone has a six needle or 10 needle. And I said, we were going to share things for all the machines. This could be done on a simple four by four hoop in one of the basic embroidery machines, the way you have shown this. That's mm -hmm. exactly what size hoop I'm using right here. Perfect. So, so all of you that are watching, you're like, I don't know what my machine won't do. Yes, it will. <laughs> so easy. You might not have the projector part, but you can still have the <laughs> hooping is the most important. 
So another one of my favorite stabilizers and um, is this fibrous water soluble. And I think Tina had it listed on the handout, but this is a cute little crown design that's built into the, um, the luminaire. And it also comes with little earrings that once oh. I wash these out, I can turn them into earrings. And I did wash out the brooch. So is that is that freestanding lace then? Free, it's freestanding lace. Awesome. But I just wanted to show this. I use two layers of the water soluble just because um, they had all of this combined in one hooping. Mm -hmm. It was combined like this. And so I thought with the dense stitching of the water soluble that I'd probably get some um, distortion in my stabilizer which I did, you can see a little bit of the puckering right around the crown. So um, that's why I use two layers of it. And, and that typically, will, will that matter though? Because once you rinse it off, it's just gonna go away anyways, isn't it? It's gonna go away anyway, and it's not going to hurt a thing. But I know sometimes because we have these large hoops, we're always trying to put as much as we can in a hoop. <laughs> Guilty as charged. And, <laughs> And sometimes that's not always the best answer, especially with your freestanding lace. I mean, like I had a cute little lace gnome design that I wanted to stitch for ornaments. And I thought, well, I'll put as many as I can cram in my biggest hoop. <laughs> and then you color sort it and you walk away, you know, you come back and you change colors. But um, I found that I got a lot of distortion and in the end, not all of them were freestanding lace any longer. Definitely so, sense. <laughs> so here's another little oh. thing that I had made. It's just little baby bib, but it was not big enough to get into a hoop or get hooped. So again, I just used the adhesive backed stabilizer. So I've got two new babies coming up in the family. So I've got to get stitching a few more baby things. <laughs> That's awesome. By the way, you're getting comments. They love your blouse. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, she's picking that. I see somebody asking, does, uh, does the persona have Disney designs? I don't believe so. No, it doesn't have Disney designs built in, but you are, uh, it's capable of stitching Disney designs. You just get them from my embroidery. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I always forget about embroidery. I don't know why, because I go there all the time. So yeah, Lynn, uh, and you've seen some of the designs in there probably, because I know you've been on a few of the last shows. I see, by the way, there's a few newbies here that say they just got a brother machine and they're so excited to be here. Well, we're excited that you're here. We're here twice a week, every week, and you go back and binge watch too for days. <laughs> All right, we got Kathy back. Kathy, did we lose your sound? I think we lost her sound. So while she's gathering that back. <laughs> uh, somebody had a question for you, Tina. When you were talking about, well, and actually she's been using sticky back stabilizer as well. Um, do you have any tips or does it gum up your needle? Do you have any tips of what they should do? Anything like that for, and you too, Barb, do you have any um, ideas? I have not had any uh, gum gumming up of my needles using the paste setter adhesive stabilizer. I have used some other brands where that has become a problem. I get a cotton ball and just barely dampen it with like rubbing alcohol and then run it down the needle and it pulls all that sticky stuff right off the needle. Another great, I have not done that. That's a great idea. I use the non-stick needles now that they have. What about you, Barb? So I'm uh, one of those terrible people. I use 7511 in pretty much anything I do, embroidery, <clears throat> and I have no problems. I've never had problem with the Brother sticky stabilizers. I have, like Tina, had problems with some of the other brands, and I do the same thing. I use rubbing alcohol. I use it on a cotton uh, ball and just poke the needle with the cotton ball with the alcohol on it, and it takes care of it. But, yeah, it, you can have an issue with that, and you don't want to do a lot of that because then it's getting down into your bobbin case. But with the brother ones, I never had a build up. Yeah, awesome. Oh, Jenny, glad. Okay, glad can you, you hear me now? You're back, yay. 
I thought I thought we were going to be the Dorothy that flies out the window, not you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's you know, it's that one of those computer things. You're back. So when I'm not using my um, multi needle for doing shirts for my grandchildren, I found the easiest way to hoop them is to set my hoop over the end of my ironing board. That's a great. And idea. I've already. Fused, I fused that um, the mesh type cutaway stabilizer to the back and I set my hoop on the end of the ironing board and then I just slide the shirt over it. And when I get it in position, then I can just take my inner hoop and press it into place and this allows me to nest oh. my t-shirt up around my hoop and this is one of those things that you are not going to walk away from your machine as it's stitching you're going to get this on your machine and you're going to sit there so that you can hit the stop button if it starts getting too close. Sometimes I'll even take hair, those big hair clips and just clip this up out of the way once I have it on the machine. But that's a, a way that you can easily nest a t-shirt for stitching on a flatbed machine. That's a great idea because if anyone's ever tried to hoop their shirt and you're trying to get into one area, I end up, you know, I make all my own clothes. So I embroider it before I put it together. But for this, that's such an easy way to get that hooped correctly. Otherwise you're trying to move it around and get it hooped and you end up with wrinkles and uh, this is a great idea. So you can see that it's, it's really um, pretty straight in there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, before I embroidered on it, I would put a water-soluble topping, that um, the one that looks like clear plastic wrap over the top, the one that Tina talked about that you can get rid of the excess with the tennis ball. Yes. But that's kind of how I do a lot of my hard-to-hoop items is either with an adhesive bag, but now I've got a tote bag. And you can see that this is the fusible tearaway. And again, I want to, I'm going to hoop this over the edge of my ironing board. I would, of course, probably have marked my positioning mark like a center, you know, in my hoop first. I mean, on my project first. Right. But this will give you an idea. Well, that's awfully crooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Kathy. You got a snowman. It'll be fine. <laughs> that's right. And one of the reasons that I like the fusibles or the stickies is because whenever I've got something like this that's hard to hoop and I'm doing it over the edge of the ironing board is that I don't have to fuss with trying to keep the stabilizer on top of the hoop or whatever. And then I've just, when I take this to the machine, again, this is something that I'm probably not going to walk away from, but you can see that it's, you know, in there nice and tight. And I know that a, a lot of people that are new will read on the internet where they say that your fabric in your hoop needs to be drum tight. That doesn't mean that you've got to sit here and pull on the edges and make sure that it's real tight because that is going to cause your puckering. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I agree. I um I see everybody saying this is a light bulb moment. Everybody has an ironing board. If you don't, <laughs> you might be grabbing one now. So this fusible 
Caraway is the sample pack that you get in with your machine. And this has to be one of my most favorite stabilizers. And it's also listed on the handout. It's SA519, I believe. So. Okay, perfect. Hey, why you have that in there? Uh, you know, you had talked about the projector and Chris has a quick question and I don't want to cut off his head, so I'll just bring it back down. Uh, let me get rid of this echo, hold on a sec. Uh, okay, so just real quick on there, if you have, if you don't have a projector and you're using a four by four, five by seven, whatever size, but you don't have the projector, maybe you don't have the snowman. Uh, do you have any tips? Uh, we, you know, all of the hoops come with that plastic uh, detail, but do you have any tips, any of you actually for placement? I would have already placed. Um, can you see this? Mm -hmm. I'm using just a a blue water erasable pen and I would have already placed a crosshair for the center of my design where I wanted the center of my design to be. And then I'm going to move that design around till I can drop my needle right here in the very center of my crosshair. There you go, Chris. Now, if it turns out cockeyed a little bit, do you guys have any tips for that? Anyone? So if they have a trace feature on their machine, you just use the trace and you can follow the needle and that'll follow the vertical and the horizontal crosshairs. And you can rotate until it follows that right on what you're looking at. You don't have a laser light, but you can see it really well, how it goes around. So Pris, it really depends what machine you have as well, but that's two tips. Tina, you have anything else you wanna to add to that? No, I agree with Barb. I would use the trace feature because you'll see right there whether it's crooked or not, and you can make the adjustment before you start stitching. Yeah, absolutely. Also, uh, for those of you that have your smaller hoops, and I don't have one right here, but they have uh, almost all of them come with that little plastic insert that shows you exactly where everything's going to go. And I kind of lay that on my fabric so I can get an idea um, as another idea too. Now, those of you that have the snowman, the snowman, I call it the feature, the snowman sticker, which has been around for a long time. It's still around. I never used that for years. Then one day I was like, I have to learn how to use this. Like it was going to be hard or something. And then I did it and I was like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> well, now I'm making snowmen outside, but snowmen on the embroidery is even better. <laughs> oh, Kathy, I think that that uh, you're, uh, Kathy, can you hear us? Okay. She might've lost us. Uh, her tip for the ironing board. I'm just reading the comments. People are going crazy. Surely I am in, I'm in St. Joseph, Michigan, by the way. With lots of snow. <laughs> Kathy, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Wonderful. You're back. So your, I was saying that your tip for the ironing board, people are loving that. You know, that's, it's such a simple solution, <laughs> but as we're doing, we're giving away tips for successful embroidery. And that definitely is going to be in the top 10. <laughs> They say it's very clever. Love these tips. Anybody have any questions before I move on? I saw some people asking about color sorting and things like that. We're not going to get into that today, only because we're not on a, an embroidery machine. This is just for hooping. Uh, but we do have videos in the past that would help you. Um, Dean wants, again, to ask, does the adhesive build up on your needle? We kind of covered that. It really doesn't. No. Not products. Yeah. Nope. And... And if you're using, if you're doing it a lot, again, as they mentioned, just wipe it off, your needle off with some alcohol. Uh, Care, who makes the nonstick needles? If you message me, I can send you that, but it's not a brother product. And you could just search on internet as well. It's a, it's been out for maybe, they've been out for a couple of years now. <laughs> Sherry says she loves that. All right. Oh, Diane, you have to learn how to use the snowman sticker. We'll have to have a special show for that because that is like, everyone's like, snowman? Now, it's not in every machine, but the Stellaire, Dream Machine, Luminaire, Dream Weaver. Quattro. Quattro? Quattro. Not the Dream. Dream Weaver doesn't have it. Oh, it doesn't? Okay, oh. Quattro. That was it. That, that was my first brother machine was the Quattro. I'd love to see in the comments before we get to Barb, what was your first brother machine even if it was an embroidery machine i know we're talking embroidery today but if you remember 
what kind of your first brother machine? Mine was the Quattro. I still have it. I still pet it. I get it serviced like every year to make sure it's running smooth. I had everything for it. Every, you know, every hoop and everything. I just love that thing. I'm never getting rid of it. <laughs> oh, all right. While we're talking hooping, Barb, you have some tips as well. So why don't you take it away? All right. Can you take me out for just a second and I'll change my cameras? Sure will. All right. Until she comes back, <laughs> I'm. Uh, it, it depends where I move. I'm cutting all of our heads off. You got to love the live shows. Hi, Karina. Nice to see you. Uh, everybody's saying hello, hello. The dream. Oh, dream machine is new for some people. Duetta. Oh, I forgot about that machine. I love seeing all these machines in the comments because some of these I haven't. I I forget about. Someone's asking again about the snowman sticker. We're going to definitely have to have a show, but if you go back on Brother So's YouTube, you'll find, I know we've done that on a few shows, but maybe we'll do one specifically just for that. All right, girls, do you have any more? Here's um, Barb coming back and Barb, can you hear us? Okay. I can hear you just fine. Wonderful. All right. So I'm going to bring you up by yourself and let's see what you have for us. Oh, your fabulous workstation. We know what that is because you were organizing. Okay, so I'm going to show you three difficult to hoop situations. The first one is velvet. So if you've ever worked with velvet, you know that if you hoop it, you can leave marks on it. Um, and we call that hoop burn. So we definitely <laughs> want to press velvet or anything that would leave a hoop burn on it into a hoop. So once again, we're going with the um, favorite stabilizer of all three of us, and that is. Oh, where'd she go? <laughs> Come no. back. Come back. Wait, Tina, you and I are the ones with the storm. What's going on? <laughs> oh, no. We're sending our, uh, <laughs> our, we'll wait for Barb to pop back in. <laughs> yeah, she cut out then just to maximize the drama because that was a good yeah, lead-in. Yeah. <laughs> She's back only because I was laughing about the hoop burn, which I did on my first fleece jacket and I left it because I figured nobody would know what it is. There you are. You're back, Barb. Okay. So that favorite safe stabilizer that we're all using is sticky back stabilizer. And I want to say that people freak out when I show samples and I say I used a sticky stabilizer. To us, it's adhesive. It's called adhesive. So this is medium weight adhesive tear away. Um, and I want to read a little bit about it. So it's useful for items that are too small or too difficult to hoop, such as collars, baby items, blankets, napkin corners, and difficult things like velvet and satin and leather and velveteen, ultra suede, all of those things that we want to do something with, but we just don't know how to hoop it. So that's our favorite sticky stabilizer. So uh, this is a repeat from Tina and uh, Kathy, but I'm just going to really show you quickly. You stick this stabilizer in your hoop, and I'm working on 10 needle um, hoops. This one is the 8 by 12, comes with your machine, but this is applicable to any um, brother, uh, well, any, any machine. You can just put this in any hoop. Like Kathy already showed you, you just tear this away and then the surface becomes sticky. So then I'm just going to lay my velvet on my hoop. I didn't mark a center because I, I'm doing what Angela does and that's I'm embroidering first. And then I will cut my you know pieces out and uh, stitch it together. So I just have a nice piece of velvet that I'm just going to stick on <clears throat> my stabilizer and I'm done. That's it. If you're not sure and you want to make sure it's more secure, you can do a basting stitch around it. That's not going to hurt your velvet. You can stick a couple of pins in the very far corners as long as your, um, you know, project isn't going to go into the corners and get to a pin. So uh, that's another way you can do that. And I'm ready to go. But you're going to say, wait, you need a topper. And yes, I do need a topper. Um, and I'm going to do a. <clears throat> tear away topper brother does not have a tear away i don't want to wash velvet so i can't use our wash uh, uh, topper and i don't want to use heat so there are toppers that have heat i'm not going to do that on velvet so i'm going to use this tear away and it's like tina said tear it towards 
the stitching and you've got no problems. This one is bumpy on the bottom and not on the top and your bumpy always goes down, just saying. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the example of, the, of a napkin. So again, if you want to embroider the corner of a napkin, you can't hoop that in a way that your corner is going to be available for you to stitch on. Because if you hoop this, you can't do the corner. Make sense? So that's the whole idea of this adhesive stabilizer so that you can now go ahead and get your design wherever you want in the corner. Then I also combined my snowman with this thing. And your snowman will read different positionings, not just center position. So I put the snowman in the corner and it pulled the design up off of this quadrant. That's another whole show, like Angela said. So <laughs> let's see, that will take care of uh, stitching out velvet or something difficult. Here's the finished stitch out. This is going to be a zippered bag for one of my granddaughters who is big into dance and it was the right size to fit her point shoes in. And it's made out of velvet, so pretty special. That's beautiful. Probably Everybody. number one. <laughs> number two, I'm going to start working with a minky blanket. So we all know that minky is horrible to hoop because it's thick and it fights us, right? This is a ready-made blanket, and I've marked where I want my uh, design to go. Again, I only want to tear away stabilizers, so I'm going to use a tear away stabilizer on the bottom. Now, Tina mentioned a medium weight and a heavy weight. I happen to have a lightweight here, the Brother product, and I don't know, maybe they're not covering it anymore, but when the lightweight wasn't enough, <clears throat> I simply folded it in half and then I had two layers of it. So tear away is excellent for things like even decorative stitches if you're not embroidering, but also embroidery. A versatile, tearaways, pliable, um, <clears throat> and this is really good for floating under a hoop. So if I've had many people say to me, what in the heck are you talking about floating? Well, if you have a hoop and you need to add a little more stabilizer or you don't want it the whole size of the hoop, you can just take your hoop and your, your stabilizer and float it, literally just put it under your hoop and that's called floating your stabilizer. So for this minky, I'm going to use, and Tina already did a little bit of this, the five by seven magnetic frame. There is a five by seven magnetic frame for the flatbeds too, and it's fabulous. And I actually did this project on that one. <clears throat> but these, the um, magnets simply pinch together to pull off. I always store my magnetic frames with something inside of them, otherwise the magnets are really tight. One thing I love about this hoop is that I can lift this up to put things in there. And I wanted to mention to you that this particular hoop has all this space back here where if I have a lot of a project, I can just stuff it back here because we don't know where to put that when we hoop something. So that's another great feature. This time, I, that's a great feature, Barb. I just, I, I'm kind of giggling though, because when I first saw you bring that up, I was like, she gonna embroider over bubble wrap? This could be fun. My nephews would have a <laughs> hand <of> that. <laughs> also a four by four for the multi needles, as well as the five by seven. And they both work off of an F driver. So you only need one driver for both of these hoops. And um, because of this huge thing on here where you can put all that excess fabric out of your way, you load this from the side of the machine. And I can show you that in a second. But let's get this minky blanket in here. So I'm going to put in my stabilizer. And then I'm going to put in my minky blanket. And like I said, I've already marked where I want the design to go. So I have a snowman on there. And... <clears throat> this, I'm going to get a little bit of my Mickey blanket out of my way in that excess space back there. And then I can just put down this kind of lid and see how well I've done with getting this in here. I don't have to get it perfectly straight because the snowman will do that for me, but it's a pretty big design. So I do need to get it pretty centered. So I mean, pretty, you know, so that it doesn't say rehoop because it doesn't fit. 
then all I do is put my magnets back on. They have a sticker on them, and that is the short side of the five by seven, and they go on the short side of the hoop. That's how easy this is. But I have one more trick for you that I think is amazing. So this is ready to stitch. Again, wait, wait, wait. You need a topper. This is Mickey. Yes, I do. However, I want the machine to tell me the positioning before I do my topper, and I'll show you why. So I'm just going to raise this up real quick and let you see how I put this on the machine. So you cannot put it on from the front because there's no way that will go under the needles. So you load it from the side like this. I have the uh, F driver on and then I simply line it up back here and push it into place. And why can't I see what I'm doing? <laughs> there, it's loaded. Wow. So you take it off. There are some little wings back here. You just lift up. Pull it off the driver and out the side again. So now I've had the machine tell me what the positioning is for my design. So now I need to, oh, I want to get less of me and more of that. <laughs> now I need to put my topper on. So here's my secret for the topper. <clears throat> I take my two front magnets off. It's not going to move anywhere. There's two great magnets on there. I lay my topper down put the magnets back on, take my back ones off, and put the topper under my magnets. So my project has not moved at all, but the point is my topper is secure and is no way going to get caught under my feet, under wow. my knee. So it's just a nice way to be able to do that. Those, so, hoops are, those hoops are amazing, number one. But the tip to be able to slide it in through the side, I that was really, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer, but you don't think of it until you go to bring it to the machine and you're like, how do I get this thing in there? Exactly. So this was the design I did over the moon. Um, oh. This is built into the 680, the new one, and uh, all the lettering editing features are in there too. But you can do this on a flatbed on anything. So that's problem child number two, would be anything thick or difficult and you wanna make sure it stays in place. All right, let's go to number three. Hey, before you go to number three, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, would you, uh, Avi wants to know, would you, the way you just did those uh, towels or not, could, could you do towels the same way you just did those blankets? Would you do them the exact same way? Um, actually, I'm going to talk about towels now. <laughs> you read her mind? <laughs> <laughs> this is the um, 8 by 14 <clears throat> It's both, there's a flatbed version and there's the multi-needle version. The difference is the color of the magnets, um, obviously, and how it loads on the machine. For the multi-needles, this is the driver built in. It just fits right on um, your machine, so you don't need a separate driver for it. So why would I use um, this one, this magnetic sash frame, instead of the other one? Well, if I want a bigger area for one thing, and there are more magnets on this to hold thicker, more difficult things. But this is what I really want to show you. See the angle, the V shape? That's an upside down V shape. Mm -hmm. That is, the fabric is going up in there and back down, and it's really holding it. This is going absolutely positively nowhere. So this particular blanket that I or um, towel that I store with has the um, stuff on the back where it's too thick to, you know, actually be able to hoop and, and in some of the magnetic hoops out there that it would slip around. But I want to go ahead and do uh, some quilting. So here is just a piece of a quilt and it has a top, it has batting and it has a backing. So number one tip, no stabilizer. You do not need stabilizer. This is stable. When you're quilting, there's no way you want to tear all that stabilizer off the back of your project. So this one, you simply take the magnets and brush along the fabric until you get to the side, and it just will pop right on over that V shape. Where am I going here? Oh, <laughs> I went too far. Oh, I have a magnet in the way. That's why, because they slip <laughs> on so easily. <laughs> Except they don't slip on over another magnet. Okay, the arrows face in 
to the project. So there's the four large ones and there's four small ones to put on. And trust me, it's not going anywhere. And then you would just go ahead and embroider quilt, quilt embroidery on your project. Here's the finished one that I just floated some roses on it that okay. came with my design center. Then I did something geometric in the center. And these little ones, the green ones have a different flower in them. And this, these have another geometric design to kind of tie in with the middle. But that's not the most exciting thing about this hoop. Okay, magnetic hoop, magnetic sash frame for either flatbed or um, multi-needle. So here's the one for the flatbed. And these are gray magnets. So now I'm going to show you. I am now quilting. Let's say I want to do an edge to edge down this table runner or wall hanging. I'm going to take off some of the magnets. I'm going to leave these two magnets on. And I have finished doing my quilting on this part. Now all I have to do is pull this up with the magnets on it in the hoop. And now it's ready. It's rehooped for a new section to wow. continue my design. So you can do that on either one of the uh, sash magnetic frames for the multi needle or the <clears throat> flatbeds. <clears throat> no stabilizer and quilts and lots and lots of magnets that hold it really well. Um, I don't know what else I have for you. I think that's pretty much it. So just a quick question on your uh, hoops right there. Um, do Can you just explain just a little bit? A lot of people are asking, will all of those work on all the machines? Do they have to get a specific one to their machine? I know we talked about this last year with the Luminaire, which there's one specific for that. Okay. So the PR magnetic sash frame it will work on the PR1000, PR1000E, 1050X, 1055X, PR655, and PR670E. So it'll work on all of those, okay? The flat the PR PR680W as well. The which one? The PR680W also. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> and <laughs> that's the newest one. And then the magnetic hoop for the flatbeds, I think it's just the, wait a minute, tell me if I'm wrong here, uh, the, the luminaires? Yeah, just for the luminaire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, just the luminaires so far. And the but, reason and the reason for that was because it's a heavier, sturdier. I mean, it's a first yes. and the luminaire had a stronger <laughs> engine, I guess you'd say, uh, to be able to handle it. That's the big yes. thing. Right. Right. The arm is totally different on the machine. So it it really needs that more strength for the magnet. Right. And also if you visit your brother dealer, they have they should have or they will have all of these frames so you can see which one goes with your machine and test it out. I mean, they're, they're so easy to do. So, Barb, there were a few questions for people who don't have the magnetic hoop, and they just asked, which process would you use? Would you use anything Kathy did or Tina did? If you were doing that blanket uh, without a magnetic hoop, how would you, would you just float it then with the sticky stabilizer? What would you do with that? Um... So I don't do sticky stabilizer on things like minky and, and um, like towels because it can actually pull the fibers <laughs> in the back. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do a sticky, but I would baste in my hoop. So my project, I would baste it in so it didn't move anywhere. That makes sense? Yeah. So what do you when you say baste, you're talking about in the machine where you have the basting stitch that holds it to... For those of you that are new, I'm just thinking, I know someone's going to say, you mean you actually sew your thing on? <laughs> no, there's a basting stitch on many of the brother machines. It just kind of looks like a box that like, you might not have even known you had it. And it's like a little box that goes around and it secures your fabric to, I use that a lot. Even it automatically when, goes to the right size around whatever design you have, whatever. Yeah. Everybody's saying they love that. <laughs> your table runner. Love that. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Marianne wants to know what machine were you using when you slid that hoop in? Is um, that the needle behind you? When I, I'm sorry, what? What's the? Is that the ten needle behind you or the six needle? It's the old ten, the ten fifty. Yep, ten fifty X. There you go, Marianne. <laughs> I 
think, gosh, everybody's saying this is such awesome. Yes, you can watch this again. I see somebody asking, can I watch this again? Yes, a couple ways. If you're on Facebook, you can share this to your page. That's the easiest way to find it again. Or you can come back to Brother So's and scroll through their videos. You can also go to Brother So's YouTube channel. You can put it in your watch list. That's something new that's really cool. Um, go back and watch that way. And you were asking, where the heck are we going to get the PDF? Well, uh, I am working on the blog post right now. It will be up. It always takes 24 hours because I'll take the video from here and put it onto my blog. You can do that at AngelaWolf.com and download it there after tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but I see there was a few more little questions. Any other questions for this awesome panel? This is your one chance to have them live. Well, not one. We're going to do this every month. Everybody voted on this. They love this. <laughs> Joanna says, great, cool projects. I agree. I agree. And Shirley, I think we answered your question. There's there's different frames for different machines. So just check with your brother dealer. Uh, Lynn says, yes, that hoop is like a great investment. Great investment. Absolutely. Hey, Jen, you can go back. You're definitely going to watch, want to watch the replay. We've covered so many things. Any uh, last minute tips? Oh, there was someone, uh, I, I left this on the side. I can't find her comment now. I think it was maybe Vicki that asked it. Does, do any of you ladies have tips for embroidering on vinyl or something like a faux leather? She's working on a makeup bag and she wants to put a monogram. Faux leather works fine. You can do whatever you want on it. Yeah. When I do I it all the time. Leather, I use the sticky back stabilizer. What stabilizer or do you guys hoop it? What's your preference? Sticky back. Yeah, it depends on the size of what I'm working on. Um, I have used the heavyweight tearaway behind it too. I think the biggest thing to remember on some of those fabrics is once you put a hole in it, the hole never goes away. It's not like a woven fabric. So um, make sure two things, make sure you get your design placed correctly. And typically you don't want a really dense fill stitch design on there because all the needle holes will effectively perforate it. And sometimes your design will pop out of the leather as opposed to being part of it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I actually did a, a set of sleeves. I never actually made the jacket because it was such a good sample and everybody wanted to see it. So the jacket's still in limbo. But I did uh, roses that was, I think they were built into the Dreamweaver back then, all the way down a faux leather sleeve. And I put a little bit of batting underneath of it and it kind of looked like Trapunto. It was very cool. But you are correct. If you make a mistake, that hole never comes out. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just checking. I think, oh, everyone's saying thank you, thank you. Cheryl said, uh, any tips on needles as far as, Cheryl, I'm assuming you meant for the, the vinyl, but um, do any of you have a preference of needle? I mean, I usually go according to the, the weight of my fabric. I mean, that's usually the go-to. Uh, some people use embroidery needles, some people don't. Uh, do any of you have any tips, last tips for needles? I start with a 7511, and if that doesn't work, then I'll go up in size. Yeah. yeah. But. And I agree with you, Angela. I try to match the needle size to the weight of the fabric I'm stitching on. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is it's not a point of pride to never change your needle. <laughs> so <laughs> do you remember about every four hours of stitching or so to change out your needle because a dull needle can actually be the source of some puckering on your projects? Absolutely. And you can hear a dull needle. It pops. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you, you know your machine pretty soon. Also, I had another quick tip. Um, some Kathy was talking about embroidering that you wouldn't want to walk away and to touch the stop button. Button touch the screen anywhere on the screen will immediately stop the machine, and it's much easier to find than that button when you're panicking. <laughs> I never knew that. You mean all these years, you just touch the screen and it stops yeah. it? Yeah. Always. Uh, these shows are awesome. I learn something every time, as every I know all of you do too, but I even learn, and I'm on here all the time. <laughs> I never do that. I think, so my favorite tip of today was the tennis ball. I am going to have to say the tennis ball was a pretty cool tip. The ironing board, amazing. Barb, you just knocked that one out of the park. <laughs> Touch the screen. Now, by the way, for those of you that are embroidering, and we're not talking about that today, but I'll give you one more tip. If you break your needle in your machine, and then all of a sudden you start getting skip stitches, you might need to order a new bobbin case. It's something very small. 
It's not that expensive, but I have done that in the past. I made a really hot mess, not live, thankfully, but this is years ago. And I could not, I kept getting skip stitches. And someone said, have you checked your bobbin case? I was like, what the heck? I didn't know you'd change that. <laughs> well, I had nicked it because of my broken needles. So there's my tip for you for the day. It wasn't hooping, but it was if you have a hot mess. <laughs> All right, Amy, this is the last question of the day. We're almost done. Our hour is up, but she would says, would you use a topper for the vinyl since it can be sticky sometimes? I, I would. If the if the foot actually is sticking to it as you're stitching, yeah, you can just put the, the topper on top and it'll it'll glide across it. Although I normally find that more in sewing than I do with embroidery. Yeah, I do too. I would agree with that. All right, everyone's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Best tip of the day, touch the screen. I'm with you, Vicki, on that. <laughs> Marsha, love that you're here as well. And you've got that fabulous luminaire. I just saw, I think it was Vicki that said that the designs that you were showing, was it uh, Kathy? The freestanding laces under Disney number four <laughs> in the luminaire. And I have two little nieces. Yeah. I never knew that either. So I'm going to have to go in there. There's so many things. Everybody's saying priceless. So by the way, uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. The Brother Social team watches this. And for if you want the download, make sure you stop by my blog tomorrow, AngelaWolf.com. I'll make sure it's up and ready for you to download. If you have any questions, you can always holler. If you have topics you'd like us to cover on the educator panel, be sure to let us know as well. I think, I don't know, ladies, I think that snowman thing is going to have to be <laughs> one yeah. of the shows. That's definitely one. So I'm looking so forward to having you all back. And uh, thank you so much for all of your awesome tips. You're welcome. Great to be here. We love doing this for everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank Have a you. wonderful day. Bye, everyone. Brother, thank you for letting us take over your page. Until next week, happy sewing. <laughs>